One of the concerns with modern AI chatbots is their hallucinations. This means they might give answers that are wrong or made up. AI chatbots and text generators can be pretty unpredictable, especially even if you learn how to prompt effectively. If you leave AI models with more freedom, they might provide inaccurate or even contradicting information. In this video, we're going to look closely at what is corrective RAG, how the corrective retrieval augmented generation process works, what is the difference between RAG and CRAG and how to use LANGGRAPH, corrective RAG and any model you would like, free or paid, to create a powerful RAG chatbot. Definitely stay tuned throughout the end of this video. If you guys haven't followed me, I highly recommend that you do so, so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. Lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn the notification, bell like this video and check out previous videos because there is a lot of content that you will definitely benefit from. So that thought, let's get right back into the video. Corrective Retrieval Augmented Generation is a comprehensive framework that combines retrieval evaluation, corrective actions, web searches, and generative model integration to enhance the accuracy, reliability, and robustness of text generation models by ensuring the utilization of accurate and relevant knowledge. In simple terms, corrective retrieval augmented generation is the method used to grade documents based on their relevance to the data source. If the data source is related to the question, the process proceeds to generation. Otherwise, the framework seeks additional data sources and utilizes web search to supplement retrieval. Corrective retrieval augmented generation employs a retrieval evaluator to assess the overall quality of the retrieved information. This evaluator helps determine the relevance and reliability of the retrieved documents for a given query. It plays a crucial role in ensuring that only accurate and relevant information is used for text generation based on the assessment by the retrieval evaluator. Different knowledge retrieval actions are triggered, correct? If the retrieved documents are deemed accurate, they undergo a refinement process to extract more precise knowledge strips. This refinement operation involves knowledge decomposition, filtering, and recomposition to enhance the quality of the information. Incorrect. In cases where the retrieved documents are deemed inaccurate or irrelevant, they are discarded. Instead, corrective retrieval augmented generation resorts to large-scale web searches to find complementary knowledge sources for corrections. Ambiguous. When the system cannot confidently determine whether the retrieved documents are correct or incorrect, a soft action called ambiguous is triggered, combining elements of both correct and incorrect actions. After optimizing the retrieval results through the corrective actions, corrective retrieval augmented generation ensures that the generative model receives refined and accurate information for text generation. So what is different between the retrieval augmented generation and corrective retrieval augmented generation? Retrieval augmented generation focuses on integrating external knowledge into the generation process and Corrective Retrieval Augmented Generation takes a step further by evaluating, refining, and integrating this knowledge to improve the accuracy and reliability of language models. Before we dive into our application, we will create an ideal environment for the code to work. For this, we need to install the requirement .txt. Once installed, we import Langchain, Langchain Google, Langchain Community, OS, Typing, Langchain Core, Operator, Langchain Schema, LangGraph, and Langchain OpenAI. We set run local to no to decide whether you want to run the language model, LLM, locally or not. For models, you have the choice between two paid API models, Gemini Pro and OpenAI. You can choose whichever you prefer. For local LLM, I'm currently using Solar, but you can decide which local LLM you prefer by checking the Olima table. Lastly, we set the Tavalty API key. We load documents from a URL, split them into smaller chunks, generate embeddings based on the chosen model, and index these embeddings for retrieval. The choice of embedding model depends on the configuration variables such as run local and models, which determine whether to use local embeddings, OpenAI, or Google. Defines a class called GraphState, which is used to represent the state of a graph. The retrieve function retrieves relevant documents based on a question from the current graph state, 
updates the state by adding the retrieved documents and returns the modified state dictionary. The function name generate takes in a dictionary called state, representing the current graph state, and generates an answer based on the provided question and retrieved documents. This function is an important function in the code in which we are going to implement the corrective algorithm and determine whether the retrieved documents are relevant to the question. If the retrieved document is relevant, we generate text. If not, we use a web search to find relevant information. We create a transform query function, which plays a critical role in ensuring that the information retrieved aligns with the question's context. Depending on the relevance assessment, it either utilizes the retrieved documents for text generation or conducts a web search to obtain relevant information. This dynamic approach enhances the robustness and accuracy of the system's response generation process. Then we perform a web search using the Tavli API based on a reformulated question to enrich the existing documents with additional information retrieved from the web. So we created a function named decide to generate for deciding the agent's next step. It takes the current state, including the question, filtered documents, and a web search. It then decides to either transform the query and initiate a web search if needed, or proceed to generate an answer if relevant information is available. The function returns a string indicating the chosen action. Overall, it guides the agent's decision-making in response to the existing state. We create a state graph workflow using graph state to manage stages such as retrieval, grading, generation, query transformation, and web search. Starting from retrieve, transitions occur between nodes. Conditional edges from grade documents decide whether to proceed to transform query or generate. Subsequently, transform query leads to web search and then generate. Finally, generate marks the end of the workflow, which is compiled into an application app. Let's prepare inputs containing a question and an LLM on whether to run locally. It then streams these inputs through the application app. For each output received, it iterates through the items and prints the node's name. Optionally, it can print the full state at each node. Finally, it prints the generated answer after the streaming process. If you want to check the results of different models, please check my website. Let's wrap up Corrective Retrieval Augmented Generation, a cutting-edge framework that enhances text generation models by addressing issues arising from inaccurate or irrelevant retrieved information. It employs a retrieval evaluator to assess the quality of retrieved documents and triggers corrective actions as needed. By integrating web searches and a decomposition-recomposition algorithm, CRAG aims to significantly enhance the accuracy and robustness of text generation processes. I will leave all these links in the description below so that you can easily access them. It's a great read and it'll give you a lot more understanding as to how they basically accomplish this. So with that thought, I genuinely hope you found it informative and valuable. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content. Like this, don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss an update from us. If you have any questions or thoughts, drop them in the comments below. I always love hearing from you until next time. Stay curious and keep learning.